Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to uh, look into a new paper called Generative Adversarial Training Data Adaptation for Very Low Resource Automatic Speech Recognition. So uh, this paper is about speech recognition but specifically for something called low resource speech recognition and uh, uh, we will uh, this paper is coming from uh, uh, Kyoto University Japan so we are going to uh, the tutorial is going to cover the overview first then uh, we will see something called speaker sparsity problem so uh, what is speaker sparse sparsity problem is uh, is nothing but uh, when when you have speech recognition uh, data you are always expected to have more number of speakers so that the model gets generalized but if you have very few amount of uh, very few number of speakers in your training set uh, that is called speaker sparsity problem. So we'll look into this uh, speaker sparsity problem, what they are facing in this uh, paper, in this data set, and then we will see how they are uh, overcoming that problem using uh, a approach called non-parallel voice conversion approach, and uh, we'll see the experiments and results. So as I said, uh, this paper uh, focuses on solving this uh, speaker sparsity problem so when i say speaker sparsity problem assume you are given a data set and uh, that data set has uh, some uh, amount of audio data let's say five hours or ten hours and uh, the data set should also have uh, speakers number of speakers more more number of speakers if, if the model has to be generalized for uh, testing speaker which are not seen during training so uh, if you look at any low resource data sets uh, very low resource data set basically like if there are uh, there are few languages which are basically uh, uh, not spoken by a lot of people these days I mean they're switching to other languages because there is uh, uh, so 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 these are called endangered endangered languages and uh, those languages will have very small amount of training data set so let's say you have only three uh, speakers in your training data but uh, in order to generate the uh, transcription for other data set where uh, the, the other audio files which don't have transcripts you need to have uh, uh, a robust uh, you need to have a speech recognition system which is robust against the speaker variations right so this is where you will find this problem of speaker sparsity because this is a, like very low resource uh, uh, speech recognition settings right and uh, the idea of this paper is to use something called cycle GAN. So cycle GAN is basically one of the uh, famous uh, generative adversarial network architecture used uh, mostly in, in images uh, to, uh, <coughs> to uh, generate uh, uh, images from different modalities. So different, uh, uh, different data uh, distribution. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a very big, uh, I mean, it's a it's a very famous model, and uh, if you don't know about it, I think you should just Google search. You will you will see uh, some results in the if you go to image section. So it's a very cool uh, GAN architecture, which was I think it was published in seven, 2017 or 18, and the same GAN model was adopted for uh, something called non-parallel voice conversion back in 2019, and there are multiple versions of it, like Cycle GAN version version VC1. Uh, let me write it Cycle. Can VC is basically the first approach, and then it then there was one, one more version called VC2, which was kind of improved version of cycle can VC. So VC is basically a voice conversion, and uh, the idea of non-parallel voice conversion is you have audio files which are not parallel. Parallel in the sense, if you want to let's say convert Obama's voice to Donald Trump's voice, you don't necessarily have to have audio files which are spoken by both Donald Trump and uh, uh, Obama, right? So that is non-parallel voice conversion and uh, that is uh, a field by itself. A lot of papers are written on that. And uh, in this in this uh, paper, how they are going to use it, we, we will understand how they are going to use it in the coming slide. But the idea is uh, to use uh, this cycle GAN to generate uh, audio, uh, to generate the training data, uh, which has, uh, to generate training data audio files which have speaker unknown speakers characteristics for example so let's say your training data has uh, speaker one uh, speaker two and speaker three right 
and for each speaker you will have some amount of audio files and corresponding transcripts right now the idea is let's say you have speaker 4 which is unknown which is which does not have transcript but you have to uh, use this for testing or for uh, decoding right what they are going to do is you know this audio you have these audio files you have these audio files as well what they are going to do is they are going to use uh, you they are going to convert these audio files uh, uh, into uh, these audio files which are uh, spoken by this speaker 4 right so what i what i mean by that is let's say uh, this speaker is speaking hello world right or how are you for example now this what they are going to do is they are going to use the cycle again to make this speaker 4 speak this word or speak this sentence hello world right then they can just include that data or the speaker uh, content back into the training data and train the model so that during testing the model has already seen speakers for uh, speech features and it can easily generalize right so this is how they are uh, planning to do so we will see uh, the details of how this uh, cycle gain is used to do this uh, uh, to uh, create this kind of dummy or synthetic training data which can be used for training the model right so i hope you guys understood but let me explain uh, one more time so assume we have uh, some data right so and this data has uh, speaker one speaker two and speaker three and each speaker has their own audio files and the corresponding transcript right text data so on now you have speaker four which has only the audio audio data but doesn't have transcript what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this audio files which have the transcript and convert or, uh, or, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this cycle again approach to make this uh, audio file sound similar to speaker 4 voice then I get the new synthetic data I get the same transcript but spoken by speaker 4 I'm going to add them back to the training data and uh, create use this for the training use this for training the speech recognition model right as simple as that so uh, that is the idea and uh, so using this approach uh, on uh, two data sets called Inu and Emboshi uh, I think it's called pronounced as Boshi I don't know so uh, so on these two data sets they get very good uh, improvements in performance basically the uh, PER uh, phone mirror rate so as I said uh, so as I said uh, this is the speaker sparsity problem you have a training data which is eight speakers and even these eight speaker the data is not uh, balanced balanced in the sense for each speaker you don't have equal amount of data like for example if you look at this speaker k it has almost 50 percent of uh, all uh, combining all this data like it has 19 hours of audio data and uh, uh, other speakers have a small amount of audio data so it, it will cover 50 percent of this data right so this is a bad problem this is a bad thing because you have first of all you have speaker sparsity and on top of that for each speaker you have data imbalance which is kind of problematic for any uh, deep learning models right so that is why if you train a plain speech recognition engine on this data your your uh, uh, system accuracy on the unknown test data unknown speakers will go down so these two are used for testing and all others are used for training if you train a plain speech recognition model on this if you test it with this data it's going to give very bad results and that is why you need this uh, approach which is non-parallel voice conversion approach this is how the architecture looks like i mean if you i think yeah, if you don't know about uh, cycle gain i think you should look at the cycle gain approach and uh, more specifically this uh, uh, there is a group which worked on uh, non-parallel so non-parallel voice conversion using cycle gains version 1 and version 2 uh, and they have used almost uh, they have used the same architecture here uh, they are act they are actually using the vc2 version they are using the uh, vc2 version to uh, create this synthetic data right so how are they going to do that so cycle gain is uh, uh, it's a bit complicated i mean i will explain uh, in detail uh, uh, but uh, just bear with me so basically you have uh, two generators uh, that's why it's called cycle because you are uh, generating in two direction and feeding uh, feeding the output of one to the another so uh, you have this uh, generator so let's call s is the source data right source uh, let's call it as uh, obama voice right obama's audio obama's voice right then you have the target which is called t here 
and it's a Trump's voice right now what they are going to do is so first let's uh, we are going to so we have this source data and you have this target data these are just audio files they are not necessarily the same content spoken by both this uh, Obama and Trump there they can be different audio files different content but the voice is uh, source voice is Obama and target voice is Trump right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this source audio file and I'm going to give it to a generator generator is typically some sort of an encoder decoder algorithm which is basically going to take sequence of MFCC features or some male features and it's going to generate uh, the target uh, speech features so in the, in the in in plain words I can say the model is going to take audio file of Obama and it's going to generate audio file for or spe sequence of MFCC features for Trump's voice right and that is what is uh, mentioned here t bar is basically the predicted uh, spectrum of the target right then uh, there are two different paths here so one is one simple way is wha what you do in usually in case of uh, generative adversarial network is you take the output from the generator and feed it to the discriminator right and discriminator will will have to tell you whether it, the generated audio is real or fake and it is it has access to the truth or uh, ground truth audio which is actual trump's voice and uh, it knows uh, you you are going to feed both of them t and t bar and it you're going to ask the discriminator to distinguish uh, distinguish uh, both these voices right so and the discriminator will tell whether it's a real uh, synthetic synthetic uh, audio file or is it a real audio file right so that's how the optimization will go on right in in, in case of uh, generative adversarial network so that is one thing second thing and the same thing happens even in discriminator as well so even in the upper path as well so the upper path is going to take the the trump's voice right trump's uh, audio file spectrogram and it's going to generate obama's audio file spectrograms right and uh, same thing you are going to you have this uh, predicted spectrogram from uh, for uh, obama's voice give it to the discriminator and also give the ground truth ground truth uh, obama's voice to the second discriminator and you ask it to uh, distinguish whether it's uh, synthetized, synthesized or the real coming from the synthetic distribution or coming from the real uh, ground real distribution right so that is as simple as that right you i mean it's a, it's a very simple case as you can see it's i mean nothing much complicated right so it's a, you have two generator and you have two discriminator and you know you feed one and get the output another and you feed the other one and get the output of an, another one and then classify this is very simple thing right but uh, that, that that is basically called cycle gan but there is some much more more, more things are happening here so they here they are uh, trying to uh, uh, create something called identity mapping so what is this identity mapping says is it is not only enough uh, it is not not just enough to create uh, trump's voice or uh, let's say let's look at this uh, this path right it's taking obama's voice and generating trump's voice right I am not only going to accept uh, generating the Trump's voice, but I also want to make sure whatever is being spoken by that, uh, whatever be being spoken uh, at this end should be similar at this end as well, right? That is called identity mapping because what we are trying to do in case of uh, in case of cycle gain is we are just trying to convert the voice characteristics, but we don't want to convert the the uh, the actual uh, content of the speech like as i said if trump is saying hello world uh, so let's say i am going to school uh, not, not a good sentence let's say trump is saying i am traveling to uh, washington tomorrow right and i want to preserve the same characteristics and i want to make the obama speak the same sentence right so here you can look at uh, look look at it as uh, two different things right so i am not only enforcing the model to create uh, the same uh, not only enforcing the model to speak in terms of uh, obama's voice but also making sure that he is going to speak whatever trump spoke the same content right so that is why this identity mapping is equal but that's why what we are doing here once we predict the um, once you predict the uh, 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 Obama's voice, I'm going to take that and feed it back into the generator. And this generator should take it in this direction and just generate, uh, uh, just generate this T bar, right? You can see this path. So this is this is for the identity mapping. And there is one more uh, different uh, loss which is called uh, uh, um, 
there is there is uh, one more uh, one more loss basic is basically this l1 loss is to compare the differences but um, there is uh, if you look at uh, cycle gain version 2 they have uh, two different discriminator this is discriminator 1 uh, for uh, target and source but they have another discriminator so instead of l1 they use this discriminator but i, I think they have not showed it here but it's uh, apparent in the paper they explain that's what they are doing but so uh, so yeah so this is the whole idea so basically i think i hope you guys understood you have two generator two discriminator so you are making sure uh, uh, the source wise gets trans uh, the source wise uh, gets converted into um, the targets voice but at the same time we want to make sure the contents are preserved the basically the phonemes and the word level information are preserved right so that is the idea of the paper now let's look at how they are going to train this model so first loss is adversarial loss as i said it's very simple you have the you have a generator uh, taking source sentence and uh, creating target sentence and as you can see it takes the source uh, 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 sentence and and it same same thing uh, applies for uh, another uh, generator as well and this is the this is one loss right adversary loss is standard loss and identity uh, let's look at the cycle consistency loss which is basically uh, given uh, so basically given the source audio if i g give it to uh, 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 source to uh, target generator it is going to give me some target right and if I give that back into the target's uh, source, I mean generator which takes target audio and uh, generates uh, source, this is going to give me S cap, right? So this is this is some sort of a loop, right? And you want to minimize the L1 loss between uh, the ground truth source and predicted uh, source sentence. This is the cycle gain, so cycle gain loss, and same thing applies for the other other direction as well so when you when you have a target utterance right so and uh, uh, so and let's look at the last loss which is identity mapping loss so basically identity mapping loss says if you uh, take the uh, generator uh, source uh, source to target generator and if you feed the other way so basically you are feeding for source to gen source to target generator you are feeding the target utterance so you want to minimize uh, this loss so that the mappings are preserved right so uh, uh, so this is this is the loss so and you, it applies both for source and the sorry source and the target and this is called lgid identity mapping loss and you want to add all these three losses together with some lambdas and train the generators and for discriminator like standard discriminator loss you can have right so that is the uh, that is the, um, the equations and the training architectures of the paper and now we will look into the the experiments so uh, the data set they use this uh, ai new uh, uh, data set and uh, uh, boshi uh, data set i think so these are the two data sets so as you can see this inu is a uh, 40 hours of audio data spoken by, spoken by eight eight, peop, eight, spe eight speakers and as you can see here there are uh, to conduct experiment they have this uh, multiple uh, they, they they're conducting experiment multiple uh, uh, batches of speakers and so on so if, if uh, when you say k u1 is basically uh, <coughs> it's basically using only the kth speaker which has basically 50 percent of the data and using the only using the one speaker which is the test speaker and when you say k u2 basically you are using the the kth uh, speaker and using uh, uh, u uh, u2 u2 i mean u2 means a uh, unknown uh, second unknown speaker and all u1 basically um, all u1 is basically using all the training speakers and using the one first uh, test speaker and all training speaker and first test speakers right and this is the amount of data and so on and uh, similarly for uh, 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 so i think boshi also i think i showed in the previous slide i think for boshi they have uh, five hours of speech read by three different spe uh, speakers and they are known as abc and uh, a, is, a and b is used for training and c is used for testing and uh, and in when you look at the model uh, they are taking the model takes 40 dimensional uh, mill mill uh, filter bank features as input uh, for and they are calculated for every 10 millisecond with 25 millisecond window and uh, lambda id is phi basically that uh, parameter uh, for the first 104 iteration then it's set to zero uh, sim similar similarly the, the lambda cycle consistency uh, parameter is 10 throughout the training 
and uh, these are like some of the parameters of the hyperparameters of the model now let's look into this uh, results so as you can see uh, baseline is a standard uh, speech recognition model so i think i didn't show you like what is the it's basically encoder decoder architecture using lstms uh, that is like the speech recognition model and if you use self supervised or if you use multilingual like these are the numbers for different different settings i mean different different batches of the uh, uh, speakers and uh, training and testing speakers and as you can see uh, vc basically the voice conversion is outperforms all this all the uh, other approaches uh, then the margin is very big like 32 17 is like uh, very big margin that's good and same thing goes for uh, boshi also like um, you get uh, more than uh, about uh, 20% improvement in per if you use uh, voice conversion and uh, that's all for this tutorial thank you so much for watching this tutorial uh, if you like the video uh, please give a thumbs up uh, if you are not subscribed to my uh, subscribe to my channel please subscribe for more uh, videos thank you